all of the success, it didn't just happen because Kirby Smart said it was going to happen in that opening press conference. That is not how things happen in the world of college football, and it sure isn't the way things were going to happen at the University of Georgia. I mean, be honest, there have always been talented players at the University of Georgia. I mean, I've lived through more than I can count. A few that come to mind, though, pretty easy. Garrison Hurst, how about that guy? Think about when Coach Donovan was there. Richard Seymour, the Bailey brothers, obviously champ among them, NFL Hall of Famer. Mark Richt, he recruited pretty well. You remember Matthew Stafford or A.J. Green or how about Todd Gurley and Nick Chubb? There have been talented players in Athens, but it's always been about having enough of them to set you apart from the other schools because everybody has a dusting of talented players. And in today's world of NIL and the transfer portal, we see that more than ever. So when a player shows that he has real football talent, real on-the-field production based on his skill level, Maybe his team's not doing really well, but he knows that he can get the job done. He's in the portal. And nine times out of 10, he's going to a team where he thinks he's going to win. And that means that he's going to be surrounded by a roster as talented as he or more. Now, granted, these things didn't exist when those other coaches were there, but that's the thing about what Kirby's done. It's about the culture. It's about the way he wants to build the program on High school recruiting, building the culture. The core of his team is going to come from high school recruiting. And the coaches who were interviewing, they flat said so. They said, it's super simple. He is going to out recruit everybody. But even with that, Kirby knew what to do, but he had to have that commitment from the university and the powers that be that they were going to give him what he needed to get the job done, that they were not going to hamstring him like they did Coach Rick, and not find a place, find the money, find a way to get that indoor practice facility built. From day one, Coach Smart was able to convince the decision makers at the University of Georgia to finally go all in, to push all of their chips to the center of the table, to bet everything on him and his experience and his knowledge and his insight about what it was going to take to make Georgia a winner, to what it was going to take to make Georgia the nation's best football team, the best football program, not one of the best, the best. He knew how to move the mountains that needed to be moved to make Georgia into what we see it as today. I mean, for years, the knock around UGA was that the administration in Athens was not willing to do the things, were not willing to spend the way they needed to in the modern era of college football to give its football program the best chance to win. And when Kirby Smart got there on December 6, 2015, he stepped to that podium knowing and believing that he had the assurances that he needed that they were going to do those things. And if they just let him work, that he would deliver. Well, obviously, they found space for that indoor practice facility. They found the money to get it built. That's what it comes back to. If you're going to recruit at the level Kirby has to recruit, the level he has to recruit to keep himself content, believing that it's worth it, willing to go that extra mile for his alma mater, then you have to raise money. Georgia has spent more than $240 million on facilities alone since 2015, since the day Kirby was hired. 
$240 million. And what have they gotten for their money? Sanford Stadium, Stegman Coliseum, Foley Field, and the tennis facilities all have seen investment and improvement. What did we learn about just last spring? The new track and field facility, which is going to be state-of-the-art, unlike anything else in Georgia for sure, that's going to be built. They found the money for that. They've raised the money to get that done. But what does Georgia football get? A brand new grass practice field that will now sit side by side with the one they already had. So yes, they have the state-of-the-art facility with the indoor practice facility and, and all the new football operations. But when Kirby needed that money and he went to the Board of Regents, he, what did he tell them? He said, injuries occur more often on that turf. When we practice on grass, we don't get hurt near as much. It's about football. I want to win. I need that grass practice field. I could use that space where the track and field, uh, you know, area is. Why can't we put it there? Well, where's track and field going to go? Well, let's go raise some money and build them their own brand new shiny facility. So the University of Georgia now has a state-of-the-art track and field facility. And the Georgia football program continues to up its game every year in every way possible. Because Kirby's not only worried about roster management and player acquisition, he understands when you are playing for national championships, especially in this era, it is not a wide gap between you and whoever's number two. We're talking razor thin margins, but it's not one thing. It's a hundred little things. And when you stack them all together, you get that separation that could ultimately make you a champion. Kirby completely understands that. He absolutely gets it. Let's keep looking at what Georgia has spent. I mean, just at football alone, since Kirby Smart's been there, they have a brand new indoor practice facility, which we just talked about. Sanford Stadium just had the West End expansion and renovation done where they got a brand new state-of-the-art locker room and players' lounge, not to mention bringing it right back home to the recruiting base that he was talking about with a brand new recruiting lounge. Once again, college football is looking at Georgia and saying, are they doing everything that's necessary to compete? Yes, and more. It's always about player acquisition with Kirby. And that recruiting lounge, even though some might have considered it to be an add-on, a toss-in, no. It wound up being the gym in the crown that was that new expansion. The brand new football ops facility has been built at the University of Georgia. The new stadium lights that went in in 2019, which, by the way, people don't want to remember conveniently, but Georgia was the first team to implement that here in the SEC, at least to the level at which they did. Now, of course, they're doing the south side expansion where they've widened the corridors, brand new press box, new luxury suites. Why? Because you have to keep those people feeling really, really good. The big donors have to be happy. Georgia has raised $200 million since 2015. And there are plans to raise an additional $300 million by 2027. So there is a plan, there is a vision. Some of the problems at the University of Georgia that have already been addressed and still need to be addressed have been around for 40 to 50 years. Think about that real quick. Do the math in your head. It's 2023. Let's jump back 40 years. Where does that put us? The early 80s, right after Georgia's last national championships. They won those titles. Hey, Georgia's great. And then they just kind of let everything run, just, you know, kick the can down the road or whatever. And Georgia, when I first came to love the Bulldogs, were absolutely a mediocre team. Eight wins a year, nine wins a year, maybe 10, maybe. 
And then Coach Donovan was there when I was a student, you know, kind of the same ballpark, a little bit of an improvement. Then Coach Richt shows up, raises the level of everything, gets everybody more involved, right? Made the fans feel more like part of the process. The family feel really started to come into effect when Coach Richt was there. But he still didn't have everything he needed. And it was just one of those things where the priorities just were not what they are now. And it was a way, it was because of a backwards way of thinking. What Georgia has learned and what Kirby Smart convinced everyone about when he arrived at Georgia was that it's not about what it costs us to win. It's about the payoff on the other side once you get it done. You cannot measure what that is. And he knew that. But Georgia fans didn't know it. All they could do was think about, you know, what it was going to cost them on the front end. They couldn't see the back end. But Kirby could. And they let him build it. He has taken fundraising at the University of Georgia to an entirely new level. Entirely new level. And none of that is going to change. So, again, it's kind of like the NIL discussion. It's part of college football now. So if you want your team to be able to compete at those levels, then you have to understand, have a plan for how you're going to approach NIL. Every school has it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's all legal. If you want to compete, do what it takes to help your team compete in that space. If it means raising money, that's what it means. So if you're not going to help your team compete, then don't complain if they are not competing for national championships. There are schools around the country who are deciding to not do things that way. Or let's just say they're doing it differently than the University of Georgia is doing it. But the way things are right now, and there are always exceptions to that rule, by the way, okay? There's a plan. This is how we're going to handle NIL for the most part. But if there are certain players out there on the board and you feel like they are absolute difference makers for your program, if Kirby Smart feels that there's a player on the board that is an absolute difference maker for the University of Georgia, the rules change. I'm not saying they blow the whole thing up. I'm saying you go into that negotiation with an understanding that it's going to be different. So, if that means that you have to go out and raise more money, then that's what Kirby's going to do. But again, the core of his team is always going to be built on recruiting. It's going to be built around the culture and the development that takes place at the University of Georgia. And he's going to start with the very best players and the very best roster he has. And then he and the coaching staff are going to work their asses off to make sure that if they do their part and the players do their part, that Georgia is going to be contending for national championships for the foreseeable future. The bottom line is Kirby wins. He was able to get all this done while Nick was still at the University of Alabama. They played for it in 17, didn't win on a miracle. I mean, that's for being honest, that's what it was. Georgia could have won the game, didn't go their way. Alabama won the game because they made the play. But they were right there. And then, of course, in 21, the dogs broke through and got it done. Against Nick Saban and his Alabama Crimson Tide. Kirby, while the greatest coach of all time, was literally one state over and ruling college football, built his program to not only compete with that program at Tuscaloosa, but defeat them. Kirby went up and snatched the crown right off of Nick Saban's head in what would be Nick Saban's final opportunity to win a national championship. Then all they did was go out and back it up and do it again in 2022, as if there were any doubt about who and what 
Kirby Smart and the University of Georgia were about. They let everybody know with that evisceration of TCU who had the best program, the best team, and the brightest outlook moving forward. The thing about Kirby is that he's driven. And I've heard other people say this, including my friend Roddy Nabolsi. It didn't matter what Kirby was going to do. He could have been anything in the world. Whatever he set his mind to was what he was going to be good at. And not only good at, the best at, because that's what it takes. So there is a lot of talk out there about what Kirby, how long he can do this, how long he can go. And there are extenuating circumstances surrounding NIL and the portal and things like that that make the college football head coaching job extremely difficult, regardless of who you are. But I don't know that it's more difficult or less when you're Kirby Smart at the University of Georgia. Because, yes, you have had tremendous success during your run there. And the grind to keep your program there is incredible. But yet, we know how driven he is to be the very best. So, is that going to be enough to keep him in the college football game long enough to maybe walk Saban down as far as national championships are concerned? Only time will tell ultimately. But we know that he's not really an NFL guy, so there's virtually zero chance that he's ever going to leave to go coach in the NFL. And there is zero chance that he's ever going to go coach at another university because he's a bulldog. Through and through, Kirby Smart is a bulldog. He has led his teams to the greatest heights that you can have here at the collegiate level. In the SEC, he has shown that his programs – can get it done in a way that most others cannot inside the conference. And then he took that and blew it up and has proven that he can do it on a national level as well. There, anybody that currently is doubting the direction of Georgia football under Kirby Smart, well, they're simply not paying attention. December 6, 2015, Georgia bet everything when they hired Kirby Smart. And they have been rewarded tremendously. We ran through the numbers earlier. The obvious thing to point out here would be the back-to-back -back national championships are the ultimate result of what Kirby has been able to do in Athens in just a few short years. And frankly, he's changed the expectation level for what any other coach that comes into the SEC or any job across college football, for that matter, if you consider yourself to be a top-tier program, Kirby has changed what it takes or what the expectations are for any new coach. He is living by standard that he has created. There has been nobody in recent college football history that has been able to set, maintain, and then achieve the kind of standards that Kirby set in Athens for the University of Georgia other than Nick Saban at Tuscaloosa. But that is history. What we're witnessing in Athens right now, well, this is the news of the day. I often wondered, could a coach do better or want to win any more just because he was a player or a alumni from any given university. And I was not sure. But in Kirby's case, it really did help. Because like I said, not only does he have a genuine love for the University of Georgia and college athletics in general, but he also knew everything about the state. He had a built-in relationship with coaches across one of the most talented high school recruiting grounds in the country. He knew exactly which levers of power needed to be pulled 
to get things to happen the way he needed them to happen for Georgia to be successful. So when the University of Georgia hired Kirby Smart to be the head football coach, it absolutely changed the trajectory for Georgia football for the indefinite future. Things will never be the same as they were before the Kirby Smart era in Athens. So how about them dogs? That's what I told them. (laughs) 